Alrighty, the gravy's done and it's time to assemble the chicken parm. So baking dish, we're doing the four cutlets today. If you have eight cutlets, you might want to use a, a little bigger dish or you might have to use two to uh, assemble all of this, uh, this goodness. Um, but the first thing we do is we put some of our gravy on the bottom of the baking dish. So that will keep everything nice and uh, moist and sitting in a pool of delicious tomato sauce, tomato gravy. So just enough to cover the bottom. Don't go too deep. Again, maybe an eighth of an inch, just enough to, you know, pretty much cover the bottom of the dish. I greased the bottom of this dish a little bit um, using some of the uh, grease from the, uh, from the cutlets. So it does have that as a base. Um, if you don't do it, it'd probably be just as good. Okay, now we put in our cutlets. So here they are. So I'm just going to snuggle them into this dish. And uh, try to keep them in one layer. One layer is best. So every piece of chicken is uh, coated in the gravy and uh, and the cheese that we're gonna put in here. Okay, so that looks good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit more sauce on top of the cutlets. So the recipe that I, I'm gonna give you calls for about a third of a cup of uh, sauce or, or gravy on top of um, each cutlet. I, sometimes I will use um, like a thicker, marinara sauce for this sometimes, uh, something with a little bit of veggies in it, sometimes uh, you have a little leftover primavera or a pizza sauce, uh, even a gravy out of a jar. I hate to say it would be perfectly fine for this if you didn't want to go through the trouble of making your own. Um, and they have all different kinds out there that might give your chicken parm a little bit of a different flavor. So if they're thicker, um, you know, they might really just sit on top. Um, this is just your basic gravy. And so I'm just going to coat each one. It's actually a nice consistency. It is kind of sitting on top of each, um, each cutlet. You can see. If it had veggies in it, it would really sit up uh, very nicely. But we're not doing that version today. Um, you know, like anything else, is what do you have in the house? What do you have on hand with cooking to get as creative as possible. And that's how you end up with new things in your recipe box, right? Just try new things all the time. All right, so there you go. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna put on today is some dried basil. Now, I don't have any fresh basil. If I had fresh basil, I probably would just, you know, wait and kind of throw that on top um, as a garnish, put some in before I bake it, and then maybe some fresh when it comes out. But, uh, this is not fresh basil season. So this is dried basil that um, I actually dried myself from the garden from last year. Um, you know, any kind of dried basil. If you at this point had pizza seasoning, you could use that. If you had oregano, you could probably use a little bit of that. Um, any Italian um, dried seasoning or fresh herb uh, that you have would be great in here. Okay. Next, we're going to do the cheese. So this is just shredded fresh um, mozzarella. If you had a whole piece, a ball of mozzarella, and you wanted to slice it and put it on the cutlets, nice uh, slices, maybe, you know, a quarter of an inch thick, and then just lay them on top of the cutlets. That would be lovely. This is fresh shredded. I actually got it from uh, Pastosa. I don't know everybody has a Pastosa um, market in their neighborhood. We do, and they have great Italian products. But um, any whole um, mozzarella that you get from the supermarket is fine. And we're just going to spread it on top of each cutlet. So this is about eight ounces. I think the recipe calls for eight ounces of cheese. Um, this is probably more cheese than what I need here because I'm only doing four. If I was doing eight, this would... You, know, you might even want a little more cheese as a matter of taste. You can 
kind of put as much cheese on here as you think you might like without like overdoing it, of course. Okay. Actually, this is looking pretty good. Now, of course, this is gonna melt on top and uh, become a nice golden brown. And then some uh, Parmesan or whatever macaroni cheese you happen to have. And I would sprinkle that all along the top of the cutlets as well. So this has got two kinds of cheese going on. Okay. And last, because I happen to have it today, I have some uh, fresh chopped parsley. And I will just sprinkle that all along the color. That's top. That's more for a color and effect than it is for anything else. Um, and it kind of offsets the parsley that we actually put into the cutlets. You're not a big fan of parsley. You want to put some fresh basil, leave the parsley out altogether. Very flexible. So that's it. That's what our assembled chicken parm looks like. All right, that's gonna go into a 425 degree oven, a nice hot oven. You can put it in for 20 minutes and it should be nice and golden. The cheese should be melted. The chicken should be warmed through and you're ready to serve it. Um, so I will uh, get that in the oven for you and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. After 20 minutes at 425, your chicken parmesan will come out of the oven looking golden and delicious, bubbling away, ready to enjoy. Hard work pays off. You're gonna love this recipe from my recipe box.